in a strange you know series of events neil one night ended up having to choose between joining eric clapton's band or santana and the kid is still in high school how neil sean changed the band santana The true rockers know that Neil Sean, of course, is one of the leading parts of Journey. But before that, of course, he was a young, hot guitarist who joined Carlos Santana, Michael Shreve and company, and Greg Raleigh, who also would end up being in Journey. Michael Shreve, their original drummer, has a brand new album out. It's called Drums of Compassion. And we'll tell you more about that project in just a second. Michael Shreve was born July 6, 1949 in San Francisco. He's an iconic drummer, best known for his groundbreaking work with the band Santana. And that career of his took off at a young age. But let's remember the amount of work you have to do to be noticed by Carlos Santana and to be on stage as one of the youngest performers at Woodstock. He was only 20. That was in 1969. This extraordinary performance at Woodstock, especially during the solo in Soul Sacrifice, is one of the most iconic moments in rock and roll history. Many call it the holy grail of drumming solos. So Shreve was a big part of the early success of Santana, playing on their first album, simply titled Santana, and released just a few days after their performance at Woodstock in 69. And it featured the hit Evil Ways. He continued to be a big part of that band on subsequent albums, including Abraxas in 1970, which included the iconic track Black Magic Woman, originally recorded by Fleetwood Mac and written by their guitarist, Peter Green. And then their amazing version of Tito Puente's Oi Como Va. Shreve's blend of rock, jazz, and Latin rhythms helped define the band's unique style. Shreve stayed with Santana till the mid-1970s, playing on several more iconic albums, including Santana 3. And he stayed with them as they experimented with more jazz-influenced sounds. After leaving the band, Shreve embarked on a very successful solo career and worked with a lot of different artists, including Stomo Yamashita's Go Project. Yamashita was a pioneer in popularizing a fusion of traditional Japanese percussive music and Western progressive rock, specifically in the 60s and 70s. This band, Go, also featured Steve Winwood and Al Diniola. Throughout his career, Shreve has made major contributions to music, but always stretching the envelope. Fusion meets rock meets world music, and he's been instrumental in popularizing African drum sounds for quite a few years. His new album is called Drums of Compassion. It's a very primal drumming masterpiece, featuring the father of African drumming, Michael Olantuji, who died quite a few years ago, but his old recordings are featured on the album. Trey Gunn is also on there, as well as Ayrto Moreira. When it comes to drumming, you can easily say, Michael Shreve has his own lane. Do you think Neil Sean changed the, the, did he change things in Santana when he came in? Oh yeah, yeah. That's an interesting story as well. Great, like I, Greg Raleigh, you know, he he brought the English rock side to that band, you know? I brought the jazz side. Carlos brought the blues and super melodic. Percussionists brought the Latin stuff and Mongo Santa Maria and all the, all the, Latin, all the Latin stuff. Um, and Greg was the English rocker, man. And so, you know, he, he always wished that uh, Carlos played a little more like Clapton, I think. <laughs> really? Well, you know, yeah. So, um, so Greg and I saw Neil Sean playing at a club. Uh, Greg and I used to live together, and he, the kid was like 16. But Gre it was perfect. Greg loved this kind of guitar playing. So... I mean, in a strange, you know, series of events, Neil one night ended up having to choose between joining Eric Clapton's band or Santana. And the kid is still in high school. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so when he came in, um, Carlos was very gracious, I think, you know, to, to agree to it, but he, they drove each other to new heights, you know? And they also provided contrast um, on beautiful piece of music like Song of the Wind. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell them apart, but you can tell them apart. They off, each offer something they play together very well. It's very respectful. 
Um, I thought I think it made some real magic. Neil is, uh, I mean, he's famous for Journey, but he's 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 a really great guitar player. I have to tell you this this record is uh, this record jiggled me up inside, man. Oh, good, good, man. This is an interesting record for me as well. I mean, um, I wanted to get it just right, and it took me like a couple of centuries to do it. But um, but it's important to me. It feels like a, a, an offering for me with, um, you know, 75 years old, and it feels like a really perfect representation of where I am musically, personally, what music does to me, how I want to transmit music, the intention behind it. It doesn't mean everything I'm going to do is going to be like this. I've already got like, t uh, you know, a whole bunch of new stuff to, to release. But, um, but this one I, I needed to let go. I, I'm, I'm glad it made you feel that way. Just the first track alone with Olatunji and the, and that groove, you know, so I mean that groove was um <laughs> I tell you that track is a, is a combination of Las Vegas Tango by Gil Evans and Gree Gree by Dr. John. <laughs> so did he really was he really uh, I, I was I was looking him up and and uh by the way he, you probably know this, but Drums of Passion, when you released that in 59, you were 10 years old back then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very aware of, 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 the, of the connection, you know, of that record. And, and, you know, the beauty of it is to go full circle and have him, you know, do the opening chant uh, on, on this record. And um, he's been gone for a while, but this was recorded for another project that I had uh, called the Braxis Pool with the ex Santana guys. And we recorded, re-recorded the song Jingo, which we did in Santana, which was Ola Tunji's song on that first Drums of Passion record. And we recorded these incantations, but the guys didn't choose, chose not to use it on the record, but I thought it was magic. And so I took it and put it on my record. Trey Gunn, oh man. Yeah, Trey. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that war guitar, man. It's really special. This piece of music uh, he's playing on a couple, but there's one that I was trying. I wanted some instrument there. I tried. I tried Graham Haynes on trumpet. I tried sax. I tried you know different instruments. Um, and then Trey, I heard Trey doing something. I thought okay let's try this because I, I wanted it to be something different and and not really recognizable in some ways but um but sound like of the world and and so i just gave it to trey and he returned it the way it is it's just beautiful on the path to healing that song's a trip to me that's like a that's a uh, it's got a really mysterious feel which i always appreciate yeah, I mean, I I cut a lot of stuff out of that, but the direction that I I I, I wish I would have put in there uh, is like more like footsteps and different gravel and this and you know the path to the healing waters, and so you know you're it's simply you know the the environment the atmosphere of like walking to a path of uh, waters that heal you, and then the way it comes in and and Scaric saxophone and stuff, you know. It's also very ambient piece, but um, but not space music. There's a lot of ambience to the sound of the piece, you know. But scaric saxophone and the way I'm just playing that cymbal, you know, it's really relaxing. You know, it's like, yeah, man, you know, Do going you to the healing waters. I'm doing my best work now because I can see more things. I have a hunger no matter what I've accomplished, but I'm going, I'm, this is my, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm more here. How do you feel? Because I listen to this album, I'm going, could, could you have done this at 25? I don't think so. I don't think anybody could have done that at 25. I think I'm doing my best work, you know? Um, 
But on the other hand, my drumming situation is different. I don't actually play drums so much anymore. I've got like arthritis in my hands. I mean, I could play, but I don't really go out and gig anymore. And I'm, I'm in, in, in advance of um, planning on me being older, I've been learning a lot, a lot of software, uh, ways that I can continue to make music when I don't have to do it in, in, a, in, a, in a physical way. Mm. And oftentimes the way I'm making music now, the drums go on last. And because I have this environment or this atmosphere, and then I, what what human element do I want to put in? And uh, so I have a different way of making music, but it's and I'm still collaborating. But there's I think I'm doing my best stuff, and I'm making visual stuff with it with AI now, and it's little movies, and um, I mean I'm very excited about you know where where everything is aside from the, the the world out there i think there's a lot of really beautiful music being made now um i think that english jazz scene that london-based jazz scene is so cool because they're, they're coming from electronics as well as like pharaoh sanders you know and it's so it's got history to it but it, it's also very accepting of whatever is new technology wise and how to best integrate that so I'm I'm really enjoying that. I enjoy the Scandinavian music makers, instrumental music makers. And I I feel like an affinity with that sort of vibe. Um, I don't know. I there's I like a lot of different music, you know. And so, oftentimes I wake up four or five in the morning, and that's my. It's like okay, you know, you can try to get back to sleep, but you're going to be up for an hour, so. I put my my ear pods in, and uh, I'll 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 explore. I'll like try to find new music and stuff. Uh, but that's difficult to do like at four in the morning. But um, because you want the vibe, say you're looking for a certain vibe, and there's so much music out there. It's fun to it. It's a great joy for me to still continue to find new music to enjoy and listen to. And I found in the past like five, six years that I haven't done that enough, that I'm just making music, making music, making music. And I don't, I don't like slow down enough to, to do what started me making music in the first place. Listen to music. Remember, if you want to support the channel, you can. There's a Patreon link at the very top of the description where you can get early access to our videos. If you just want to make a donation, there's also a PayPal link. We always appreciate if you do that. Because YouTube's income these days is all up or all down, not just for us, but for a lot of creators. The links in the description also have our Instagram and our TikTok channels and our Facebook page. We also release a lot of things on those channels as well. Remember to subscribe to our channel, share our videos, comment on them, and like them. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. More from Michael Shreve coming up in the next few days. Ah!